The fascination with building an atomic bomb has long been part of pop culture, but people living near one of the test sites say there's a story that has not been told. They have suffered through generations of health issues and believe it all goes back to the radiation released by the bomb. They call themselves the Downwinders. ABC's Maria Varial talks to them about their history, health, and the long fight for government compensation. I was raised 40 miles south of here. And there was nothing but open country. The only people that was down there was ranchers. Quiet ranch land sitting between rolling Rocky Mountain Heights and vast desert plains. This is New Mexico. Our great grandfather, Presiliano Pino and his wife uh, first uh, homesteaded here at the end of the 1800s, maybe. They fed themselves like by having chickens and hogs and goats and things like that. In the late 1800s, before New Mexico was a state, the land was already populated by farmers and ranchers who made a home in the land of enchantment. But these sparse scenic vistas also attracted the U.S. government and a top secret scheme to win the nuclear arms race using radioactive materials like plutonium and uranium to create the world's first atomic bombs. The Manhattan Project. They use us for guinea pigs? We were bombed. The government didn't want us to know. I had cancer. My sisters had cancer, my only sister. I thought, that's why my brother died of cancer. That's why my mom died of cancer. That's why my sister has a brain tumor. We were simply collateral damage. Manhattan Project was the U.S. government effort during World War II to build the first atomic bombs. And then, you know, quite a lot of effort to turn these ideas into weapons that could actually be dropped in war. And they did all of this in about two and a half years. The existence of the Manhattan Project was top secret. The fact that they were making an atomic bomb, much less testing an atomic bomb, much less had an atomic bomb, this was totally secret. It also means that they had to cut a lot of corners uh, because the time was the priority, not safety. Wes Burris was just five years old on July 16, 1945, when an atomic bomb was set off in a test about 200 miles south of Albuquerque, New Mexico. This is the house that I grew up in right here. I was asleep, and uh, the first thing I remember is that window hitting the wall, wham, and the glass falling in the bed. That's the first thing I can remember. Well, I jumped up. It was so bright, I couldn't see. And I looked out at the bomb, and I, all I could see was just like looking directly in the sun, only brighter. I said, what happened, Dad? Did the sun blow up? The code name for the detonation site was Trinity. The nuclear blast from that day created a flash of light brighter than a dozen suns. It was seen over the entire state of New Mexico, parts of Arizona, Texas, and south of the U.S. border. Residents nearby reported a white powder substance like flour or snow settled on everything. And then for the next few days later, we got the fallout from it. A lot of it would just be, it'd be on the ground, a little white ash and all kinds of stuff that would fall out of the air. The Burr's home was on the backside of a gas station and they were left in the dark about what was really happening. Nothing. They would not tell anybody anything. That was hush-hush, 100%, and still is, you know, as far as really telling you the details. That's just like this movie that they put out about Oppenheimer. They didn't tell nothing in that. That, that movie's a bunch of bunk. As far as the bomb itself and what happened and what they did building it and all the things that took place to put that into place, that was never in the story. In fact, what the army did was give out false information about what had happened. Uh, they said a munitions dump had exploded and it was not a big problem and it was fine. Um, and this was an attempt to make sure that nobody investigated too deeply into what had happened until after uh, the attack on Hiroshima. And we've lived in it all the time. We breathed the air every day. We ate the dust. And the, we ate the cattle that we raised. We ate the crops that we, we, we uh, out of the garden, the fruit off of the fruit trees. Every breath we took, 
we breathed it. And how we lived, I don't know. And the night that the bomb went off, about where were you here? I was right here, in our bedroom was right there. Me and my brother was asleep right there under that window. For 83-year-old Wes Burris, this historic explosion left painful questions in its aftermath, leading him to believe his brother and sister's deaths from cancer are linked to the Trinity test. The roof has made a big difference. 30 miles east of the Trinity test site is the Pino family ranch. Thousands of acres that sit at the base of the Carrizo Peak. We had a wedding right out here and I was the best man for, for my cousin Ray. For more than a hundred years, this is where the family has gathered to celebrate special events and holidays. I just have a lot of peace when I come here. Yeah, just knowing that mom was here and the stories that she told, you know, about her experience growing up here. It's pretty cool. It's kind of dark, but we have electricity. Growing up in New Mexico, Paul says they knew about the atomic bomb and how the state played a part in helping win the war but his whole perception of that nuclear blast and the impact it may have had changed after sitting through a town hall meeting in Albuquerque. The group speaking that day called themselves the Downwinders. And in those two hours, everything just hit me. I thought, that's why my brother died of cancer. That's why my mom died of cancer. That's why my sister has a brain tumor. That's why my other sister had, had thyroid cancer. It all just became so clear, you know. I started doing a little research and it was like, wow, this area is, you know, rate of cancer is super high. And it's because we're all exposed to radiation. How many people have died or been affected by cancer in your family? My mom, dad, sister um, died. My niece had cancer, but she was young. And my son and myself who were still living. Where do you think it came from? The, the bomb. Because we were raised on a ranch, we drank the well water. Shortly before the 1945 field test, new calculations indicated the fallout could be more substantial and widespread than the government originally thought. But no monitoring of contamination on the public was performed. Today, the Trinity test site is open to the public once a year. It wasn't an atomic bomb. A test is something you do in a Petri dish or a little thing in a lab, you know. Contain they, they, blew, they blew up an atomic bomb 48 miles from our house. People weren't warned, you know, you, they didn't even tell you the day of, you know, get yeah. in your house, stay inside, uh, don't be out, nothing. Both Wes and the Pino family are now working with the New Mexico Downwinders Consortium, pleading with Congress to include their family and hundreds more in the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act. It baffles me that uh, why wasn't New Mexico included? I mean, it happened yeah. right here. I mean, we got direct concentrated hits and we were not in included in the compensation and that's why we're fighting. The clock is ticking and we're running out of time. We literally have very little time left. As the co-founder of the Downwinders Consortium of New Mexico, Tina Cordova is demanding more than just a chance at survival. And she's taking the fight all the way to Capitol Hill. We will never go away. You know, looking back, I was so incredibly naive because I thought, we're going to bring this to the attention of our government. They're going to see how horrendous this is, and they're going to come back and take care of us. Did that happen? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I've been doing this work for 18 years. This, this is a photo album uh, primarily dedicated to my dad. Tina watched her father suffer through several battles with cancer and believes his diagnosis was a direct consequence of the blast. I have lost count of my own family members who have died from cancer, um, who have suffered through all of this. To include my father, uh, both my grandmothers had cancer. My mom's only sister died from cancer. My dad's older sister just got through cancer treatment. My mom's being followed for a tumor. I had cancer. My sister's had cancer, my only sister. And now I have a 23-year-old niece that's been diagnosed with thyroid cancer.
Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. And although radiation exposure is a known risk, it may be impossible to know how this exposure influenced a person's chances of getting cancer. Still, the 1990 Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, RECA, includes people exposed to high levels of radiation, including uranium miners, workers at the weapons sites, and downwinders in Nevada. But the New Mexico downwinders were left out. It's hard to prove whether or not any given cancer is the result of an exposure from the testing. So what the law does is basically say, if you're living, if you lived here in these times and have these diseases, you get to count as a downwinder. In July, U.S. Republican Senator Josh Hawley and Democratic Senator Ben Lujan crossed party lines to push the Senate to pass a RECA amendment that would finally include the New Mexico downwinders. But the proposal is now stuck in negotiations over the defense budget. The injustice that these families have been endured with. Um, families that have sacrificed so much for the national security of our country. They now have cancer through no fault of their own and for no other reason other than exposure. If the RECA amendment to add the New Mexico downwinders doesn't pass by the end of the year, the initiative dies and the RECA Act expires in June of 2024. Every option should be on the table so that way we can get something passed that provides support to these families and I'm committed to doing so. And there's a track record of Democrats and Republicans making those votes to allow that to happen. If there's not success found on, on, on this day, we will fight another day. Officials from the Department of Justice's Civil Division, which oversees RICA, say the program has already paid out more than $2.6 billion in compensation since the 90s. Individual payments range from 50,000 to 100,000 one-time lump sums, potentially life-changing money for the families who qualify. It's pretty scary. Seems like that, you know, like that ghost is just hanging over you all the time because you wonder, you know, who, which family member uh, is going to, you know, come down with the, with cancer. It's just, uh, just scary. This one haunting moment lingering for thousands of New Mexico downwinders as the government decides what to do next. We bury our loved ones on a regular basis. I don't know what else we could give to this. I don't know what else they could ask us to give to this. We've been waiting 78 years, 78 years. Our country has to be better than this. Our thanks to Maria for that. And you can see more of the lasting impact of America's nuclear past in our special tomorrow night, Fallout, Two Nations Under Uranium. It airs at 8.30 p.m. right here on ABC News Live and then streaming on Hulu. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.